Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me again. May God Almighty bless us and watch over us and guide us in our study of his word. Today we're going to look at Isaiah 6. And before we start, what's the most important thing? That you call upon the name of the Lord and accept him as your savior and you will live forever. There's a terrible destruction coming to the earth which we read about over and over and over in the Bible which we've been warned about by a God who loves us and wants us not to be here for the destruction. And all we have to do to exit is to call upon his name. So let's read Isaiah 6. 6.1 6, says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. So Isaiah is looking up and seeing heaven. He's going to see into heaven. Uh, King Uzziah dying could be a shadow of the dead in Christ, and I saw a shadow of those who are alive and remain. Because we have the rapture happening. Same thing happened to John as well at uh, the book of Revelation when he saw into heaven. There were shadows of the dead and shadows of the alive and the remaining. Isaiah 6, 2 and 3. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. We see the same things in Revelation 4, 8 and Psalm 72, 19. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And, and blessed be his glorious name for ever and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. So Isaiah is seeing into heaven. He's seeing the throne of the Almighty God. He's seeing the uh, seraphim surrounding the throne. And then he sees something strange. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. So we see posts and moving again in Amos 9, 1. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar. So this is God standing up. And momentous things happen when that takes place. And he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the posts may shake. And cut them in the head, all of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away. And he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Don't be here. Don't be on this earth when this happens. Call upon the name of the Lord. He wants not one of us to perish. He has warned us repeatedly throughout the Bible. If we believe him, we will call upon his name, we will confess our sins to him, uh, accept his atoning sacrifice for all the evil that we've done, and escape the judgment that we're due. He wants everyone to accept that, and therefore he's warned us and warned us and warned us. So we saw in Amos 9 1 how God stands up. Revelation 5, 6 says, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven heads and seven eyes, seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God set forth into all the earth. We see the house being filled with smoke in Revelation 15, 8. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. So we saw that in Amos 9 1. Um, let's see. He that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. And then we see in Revelation 15 8. No man was able to enter the temple. So you have to make your decision for Christ now. Today is the day of salvation. Not one of us is promised our next hour or our next day. And the end is coming very soon and the rapture before that. So the posts of the door being moved, the, uh, the uh, smiting the lintel of the door. I think that's heaven and earth trembling when God stands up. Isaiah is in heaven now. He's seen the house filled with smoke when the posts of the door moved, which represents the heavens bowed and the earth shaken. Okay, Isaiah 6, 5. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Woe is repeated in Revelation. There's three woes of the fifth trumpet and the sixth trumpet. 
and the devil coming down in Revelation 8.13 to Revelation 12.12. 12. Revelation 8.13 says, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Um, Isaiah is saying he saw the king, and that's what he was seeing, a vision into, into heaven. Uh, all the earth will also see the king when he comes right before these woes. In First Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17, we see, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is the desire of God, that not one of us is left on this earth. Revelation 1, seven says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. I don't think the rapture will be secret. Uh, every eye will see God coming. Now, it might be explained away quickly afterward, and people's, you know, will have no access to the truth, but I think it won't be secret when it happens. They also which pierced him will see him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Now, Isaiah 6, uh, 6 through 8. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Isaiah 6, 8, a favorite verse of mine. Also I heard the voice of the Lord, saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. God wants us all to be strong in his defense. Uh, there's many verses that cover that. Acts 20:24 20, is a really good one. This is Paul speaking. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The gospel of the grace of God, the grace of God is an incalculably valuable gift, eternal life, eternal um, happiness, eternal joy. This race we run on this earth is short, and the more people we can testify um, to of the gospel, the better. And uh, more verses on being strong include... Second Chronicles 18.13, when Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. In Proverbs 24.10-12, through 12, God tells us, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not. Doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? and shall not he render to every man according to his works. So don't forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death. Isaiah 6, 8 we just saw. Acts twenty twenty four we just saw. Back to Isaiah 6, 9 and 10. And he said, Go, and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. So we're told by Jesus in John 12:40, He hath blinded their eyes, and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. This will happen, this is Israel, being blinded to the Messiah. And it will happen until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in, in Romans 11:25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. Isaiah 6:11. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. When will Israel see their Messiah? Well, the desolation that's spoken of here 
is also spoken of in Revelation 18, 19. And they, cast, and they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For one hour is she made desolate. This is the destruction of Babylon the Great, the United States of America, with a surprise attack that will happen, and in one hour she'll be made desolate. The world will be astonished that it happened. And that is when Israel's eyes will be opened on the day of the Lord. But what happens before that? Isaiah 6.12 And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. So here's the rapture, right before the destruction. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. And Second Thessalonians 2, 1-3 The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. That's the rapture. There come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So there is God removing men far away, and the great forsaking. Finally, Isaiah six thirteen, the last verse. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten, as a teal tree and as an oak, whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. So here I need to do more studying. I don't know exactly what Isaiah 6.13 is telling us. It's the only instance I could find of the teal tree in the Bible. But the beauty of the Bible is it's living and every verse, every word of every verse means something. So someday I will become wiser and understand what these words mean if it takes the Lord himself to show me when I'm in his presence in heaven. And I hope you all will sit by his feet and learn from him as well. This book is astounding. It seems so trivial and old and, and um, ancient and antiquated to the world, but it is uh, so complex, so full of wisdom, so amazing in how everything was told to us before it would happen, as Jesus Christ told us. So, I encourage you to make your decision for Jesus Christ today. The, uh, the gospel is simple. What do you have to do to be saved? Acts 16, 30-31 And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. That's it. That's all. But we have a benevolent, just, and good God who must give us free will. We must have a choice between good and evil. Evil and good must exist for us to choose between, and it is your choice to make. I hope you make that today. God bless you, God keep you, God watch over you, and I hope to see you all soon.